Could I ever say what I had no right to say? If I had said such a thing, you would have certainly known it. You know what is hidden within me, but I do not know what is within you. Indeed, you alone are the knower of all unseen. I never told them anything except what you ordered me to say. Worship Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. And I was witness over them as long as I remained among them. But when you took me, you were witness over them, and you are a witness over all things. You punish them, they belong to you after all. But if you forgive them, you are surely the Almighty, all wise. 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 This is life eternal, life eternal. that they, they know you only as the true God. God. And I'm just I'm a just servant, servant, and I ain't nothing more. Been a messenger, you say that Mary's God? Well, then I question her. If then God be your father, then tell me where his honor. Why you worshiping Jesus and worshiping his mama? You crown a creature, I crown a creator. He's my only savior. You crown a creature, I'm pulling him down because I know he's greater. I'm being critical. No apology, cause Christianity is idolatry. No, it's not biblical or philosophy. Your bitch need a of spiritual adultery. Matthew 19 is the 
the perfect scripture and paints a perfect picture of our servant Yeshua, and he will testify against you on that coming day. When all the eyes are stacked against you, what you gonna say? Why are you calling me good? Good. Why are you calling me God? God. There is only one that's good. Good. And the only one is God. God. Why are you calling me good? Good. Why are you calling me God? God. There is only one that's good, good, and that only one is God, God. Why are you calling me good, good? Why are you calling me God, God? There is only one that's good, good, and that only one is God, God. Why are you calling me good, good? Why are you calling me God, God? There is only one that's good, good, and that only one is God, God, God. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth. Greetings and welcome to the page if you are new. Today we're going to talk about the graven image. This is the basics. This is the ABCs of faith. These are the one, two, threes. Why do we make it so hard? Why do we make it so difficult? God's word should be so simple that a child can understand it and the simple truth is found in his law the most high God will not give his praise to anyone he will never share his glory now what does a graven image represent a graven image is going into a grave image this is just the basics. Look at the picture on your screen. This right here is what we call a grave image. It is widespread all over. And this is also a carved image. As you can see, the cross. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 4. Thou shalt not that's a command. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Now this grave image is what you see on the screen. And this right here is something you will see in the AD that Jesus will destroy. God Almighty, the all-powerful God, is all about himself being worshipped. Nothing else, no one else. Christians are committing idolatry right now. They are putting the creation above the Father. I'm going to give you more scriptures on the grave image. Leviticus 26 and 1. You shall make no idols nor graven image. Neither rear you up a standing image. Neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am the Lord your God. This is speaking of the cross. This is speaking of the image of Jesus Christ. Today, those are the most popular images. Which God Almighty detests. Let's go to Deuteronomy 4 and 16. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. The similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. Now the Kaaba is not an image of a person. But what is the image of a person? Here we have a picture. The most popular picture is the drawing of Caesar Borgias, which is a picture 
of the Christian's idol. Prophet Isa is like Samson. Why do I say that? Because Samson had his eyes gouged out. And who has gouged out Samson's eyes? I'll tell you. It's the church, BKA Delilah. They have been worshiping Jesus rather than worshiping the Father. And this right here is what has metaphorically put out Jesus' eyes. And one day, the word of the Lord will come unto Prophet Isa the second time, peace be upon him. And the first thing he will destroy is the cross. The cross has put out his eyes. He cannot stand to see that cross. He cannot stand to see himself being worshipped. This right here is breaking his heart and has been breaking his heart for some time. And he is longing to get back to planet earth so that he can destroy the religion of Christianity. And it will ultimately be destroyed in the killing of the firstborn and that is Jesus himself. Let's go to Deuteronomy 4.23. Take heed unto yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord your God hath forbidden you. Deuteronomy 4.25. When you shall beget children and children's children's, and ye shall remain long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image, or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. Worshipping a graven image still exists today. This is going to be 2 Kings 17.41. So the nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers. So do they unto this day. Right now, today, people are worshiping a grave image. And that grave image is Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, B.K.A. Jesus. The world has made an idol out of him because the church has made an idol out of him. Now think about it. I'm going to show you what the Christians have done. The Christians went from worshiping the Father to worshiping the creation. How would you like today if your son was just the man of your house? How would that make you feel if your wife treated your son like the man of the house and disregarded everything you say? That's exactly what has happened in Christianity. Christianity is the worship of the creature rather than worshiping the creator. And I have more scriptures for you later. Now think of the story of Absalom and how he stole the hearts of the people. And that is a picture of Christianity stealing the hearts of the people through the worship of, they call him, the son. Okay, and we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no sons. He has no literal sons. Although we are all sons as in chosen. Okay, just like Prophet Isa. Um, he's not the first person to be called a son. If you read your Bible, the angels were the first to be called the sons of God. 
But Israel was called a son, and many other Bible characters were called a son. That doesn't mean that they are the literal sons of God. So, Christianity is a form of idolatry, but it is the highest form of idolatry. And we'll get back to that in a moment. Going on. Second Chronicles 33 and 19, his prayer also and how God was entreated of him and all his sin and his trespass and the places wherein he built high places and set up groves and graven images. Before he was humbled, behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers. The problem of Israel was the worshiping of graving images, and that's exactly what is going on disguised in Christianity. Christianity is all about worshiping the creation. That's what they do. They do that without even thinking. Instead of saying, God bless you, they'll just be like, Jesus loves you. It is all about the creation with them. Now, unfortunately, we are living in a time where the spiritual IQ of most of the world is very low. Now, sometimes I wonder and I ask myself, how long is it going to take for the people to wake up and to realize that this gross image you see on the screen right now is something that God detests? That's why I X'd it out. People all over the world are so dumb. And I'm just being honest. They are so blind, miserable, poor, spiritually, that they can't see that Christianity is nothing but idolatry. Think about it. All the smartest people in this world right now, all of the wise men do not get this. They do not understand that Christianity is the worship of the dead. It is the highest form of witchcraft we know of. Just like Prophet Samuel was being brought up from the dead by King Saul, that is exactly what the Christians are doing. They are bringing up a prophet whom they say is dead. We know that Allah took him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jesus, peace be upon him, alive. And we know that later, God will cause him to die. But just like King Saul was bringing up the dead prophet, that is exactly what the Christians are doing with prophet Isa, even though he has not died yet. So I can go on and on on grave images, graven images. Okay, and I want to show you some scriptures how God will never give his praise to a graven image. That is Isaiah 42 and 8. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. Now if you go to Quran 5, 1, 16, you'll hear Jesus make that confession. And he says, glory be to you. Because God never shared his glory with no one. God is a jealous God. And he will not share his worship, his praise with no one. Let alone Jesus. He will not share his glory with no one. That is the fundamentals of faith. God will never ever give his praise to anybody. Now going on it says I am the Lord that is my name and my glory will I not give to another neither my praise to graven images 
or carved images. God will never give his praise to Jesus. God will never give his praise to that wooden cross. As a matter of fact, that is the first thing that Jesus will destroy along with the pig you see and along with the Jizia tax. All that is seen in the symbols right on the screen. You see the piggy bank? Yeah. That's going along with the cross being destroyed as well as the pig. Which is a gross animal to consume. And the Christians have no excuse. Because the most high God has always commanded us not to eat the swine. Okay. He tells us not to eat. Touch it, and that's going into eating the swine. And if you're eating pig today, you're gross. Eating a pig is like eating your dog. It is gross. It is something that God will hold you accountable of. Going on. The Most High is a God. That will never share his praise. I must keep going over and over this again and again. I'm so saddened when I look at this nation and I see how people just do not get it. And I, and I ask myself, how long is it going to take for these people to wake up? It's so sad. Now we're going to go over David. Now we're going to talk about David. In Acts 13, 22, it reads, And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. There's so many life lessons in the stories of David. And one of them is the story of Absalom. This is going to be seen in 2 Samuel 15, 4. And Absalom said, moreover, Oh, that I were made judge in the land. Can't you hear that song? Oh, I just can't wait to be king. I just can't wait to be king. That all comes from this scripture right here. The children of men were always set. On taking God's place. This is what they wanted. The children of men. Has always been set. On taking God's place. And this is exactly what Absalom wanted. He wanted to take his dad's position. As king. Absalom said moreover. Oh that I were made judge. In the land. That every man which have any suit or cause. Might come unto me. And I would do him justice. Now this is what the heart of man has said to God. And they literally made it a reality. Through the apostate Paul. Jesus is now in the place of God. No one is worried. No one is concerned about their fate. They just literally have their hearts set on worshiping the creature more than the creator. And they don't even see nothing wrong with this. This is how desensitized our nation is. This is how biblically blind our people is. They can't even see the Bible. They can't even see the words in the Bible. Okay? They can't even fill it in braille. They do not understand that God detests anything being worshipped Rather than himself. This is the reason why God created the religion of Islam through the prophet Muhammad again. Because we know for a fact that Abraham was Muslim. We know that the prophets were Muslim. We can read our Bible and just look at how they conducted themselves. Especially in prayer. That they had knowledge that we did not have until the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, came along. In the life lessons of David, we see that in this story, Absalom wanted to take his father's place. Verse 5, and it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, that is to bow, 
he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. Now the scripture comes to life when Jesus said, Betrayest the Son of Man with a kiss. The nation of Israel betrayed the Most High with this religion they created by the apostate Paul, Christianity. Verse 6, And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Now this is exactly what Christianity has done. Now you'll see Absalom, his fate and how he was stabbed in his heart uh, with three darts and he was caught in the tree <laughs> by his hair. All that is going into the religion of Isa, which was given to us by the apostate Paul. This is the real reason why God has a great hatred for Esau. Now, the religious Israelite camps, okay, the Pharisees of today, they want to push all of this on the white man. But God's hatred for Esau is going into the religion of Esau, and that is the religion of Christianity, which was given to us by the apostate Paul. So, when a person reads a story like this, how come it doesn't click? How come they don't see that God doesn't want anyone taking his place? Christians have taken the scripture where Jesus said, I and my father is one, to make them believe that Jesus is the father. That is nonsense. The Bible says in John chapter 17 that we all are one. Just because me and you and Jesus is one with the Father, that doesn't mean that we are the Father. Okay? Going on, we have 1 Samuel 2.29. Wherefore, keep ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorous thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat, with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. What is the chiefest sacrifice today? What is the chiefest offering? The biggest sacrifice known to mankind is the crucifixion, the false crucifixion. It really was a crucifixion of Jesus. Okay? That is the biggest sacrifice that has betrayed the Father. Let's read 1 Samuel 2.29 again. Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honors your sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. So we see that the God of yesterday did not want the sons of men being put before him. Well, then how come in Christianity this is exactly what they're doing? They are putting the son before the father. Although God never changed. And that is seen in scripture. In Malachi 3.6, it literally reads that God does not change. But the Christians have kicked at the Lord's sacrifice. And they have honored the son above the father. And they did that with God. The death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, supposedly. Now, I'm going to show you how Paul is responsible for this. you got to look at all my messages on Paul. I'm waiting for you Christians to wake up. I'm waiting for Muslims to wake up. I'm waiting for people to see that Paul is the wolf in sheep clothing and we need to be exposing this truth to everyone. Everyone needs to see that the religion of Christianity is nothing more than the religion of Paul. And this is the great fight. Right now, there's two religions that is fighting. And that is the religion of Islam and the religion of Paul. Better known as the house of Saul. The kingdom right now, the Israelites don't have it. The kingdom right now is in the hands of Saul. 
And until Muslims and Christians wake up and see this truth, then we will continue to be under the domination of Saul. Okay? Now this is exactly what the big fight is. And most Christians and most Muslims don't even know that Paul is the greatest enemy to the Most High. And we have to push this truth. Okay? Going on. 1 Samuel 4.12 And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. Now think about this, y'all. Think about this. Why is there a man from Benjamin running out to the camp? Let's go to 1 Samuel 4.11. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinez, were slain. Okay, so here we have the ark of God being snatched. And we have the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinez. Now, those two sons represent Judah and Ephraim. This represents the kingdom being taken from Israel. And it's supposed to go to the nation of Islam. It's supposed to go to Ishmael. And it will go to Ishmael. But here we have a man of Benjamin. And he came to Shiloh. Now, that's a picture of Paul. Paul thought he was the Shiloh. Wake up. Paul thought that he was the last and final lawgiver. And here we have this man of Benjamin coming to give Eli the news of the ark being snatched and the two sons dying. That is a picture of the thief, Paul, who stole the kingdom because he stole the hearts of the world through his message that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, the biggest lie in the Bible. Okay? So going on, now we're going to get to this Hadith. Yes. Now look at that picture. Look at that picture. I put that picture together today. That picture has a Hadith on it. And it's from the Sahih al-Bukhari 2476. And it reads... Allah's messenger said, The hour will not be established until the son of Mary descends amongst you as a just ruler. He will break the cross, kill the pigs, and abolish the jizya tax. Money will be in abundance so that no one will accept it as charitable gifts. Okay? At that time, Money will be refused as a gift, just like in China, they will not accept a tip from you, okay? This is going to happen. Now, we have scripture of Jesus destroying pigs, don't we? Matthew 8, 32, and he said unto them, go. And when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down to a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters. So we have a hadith of Jesus destroying the pigs. And we have scripture of Jesus, the only prophet, the only prophet in the entire Bible, destroying pigs. We understand that Jesus was a Muslim. I'm sorry you too blind to see it. We have the Hadith coming from the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Okay? This man spoke by revelation of God. That's why he is called the Comforter. That's why he is called the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because he spoke by the revelation of God for Deuteronomy 18 speaks of a prophet that will speak the oracles of God. And whoever will not listen, it will be required of him. For God said, I will put my words in his mouth. Those words in his mouth is like a donkey jawbone shooting out water. Which is exactly happened in the book of Judges, okay? Water coming out of the donkey's jawbone is a picture of the prophet Muhammad speaking the words of God. The unclean animal, which represents a Gentile, speaking.
speaking in the Bible. Think about it. We've had a donkey talk in the Bible. Not a sheep, but a donkey. An ass. Okay, speaking in the Bible. That's a picture of the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. Now, why do they call a donkey an ass? I learned from studying the Bible that God has a certain language that he wants you to see in the English language regarding the Bible. Why is a donkey called an ass? Well, think about it. Who split the moon? The prophet Mohammed. And when you're sagging and someone sees your plumber's crack, <laughs> what do they say? Stop mooning me. Well, the prophet Mohammed split the moon. That's why the donkey is called an ass. It is a picture of the Gentile messenger. For God said, I will put my words in his mouth. And the prophet Muhammad, he pointed to the moon, and by Allah's leave, subhanahu wa ta'ala, it split in two. It divided. Okay? That was a huge miracle. Okay? Just like if a person is sagging, you, you'll look and you'll see. It's like they're mooning you. Okay? God has orchestrated this thing in the English language for dummies, and they can't see it. And I see it. He is the prophet, the last and final messenger. And the apostate Paul, he literally tried his best to be just like the prophet Muhammad. He was in the wilderness. He was in Arabia. Okay? He gave us 13 letters. Okay? Paul, in his own mind, thought he was the Shiloh. And a lot of people don't understand this. They don't understand why Paul was in the wilderness. Paul thought he was somebody. Okay? Paul called himself the father of the Christian church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15, although Allah told the prophet Muhammad that he is not a father to any one of the people, and Jesus said, call no man your father, here we have in Scripture... Paul calling himself the father of the Christian church. That's why we know he is the founder of it. <laughs> so as you look at this picture, and I want you to spread this message, even if you don't agree with it, okay, because it is the truth. It is the truth. We can't do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Even Paul knew that, okay? We have Jesus destroying the pigs, and we have Jesus destroying what else? The cross, okay? And if you study your Bible, you'll understand that there is a scripture in Isaiah chapter 34 where the Lord speaks of his clothes being bathed in blood from Esau. Now that is a picture of the blood being spilt of the Christians in the last day revival there is going to be a last day crusade and I truly believe that the hatred God has for Esau is going into all of those who are polytheists who are worshiping more than one God they call him a trinity in which Allah instructs us not to say such things I truly believe that the sword of the Lord is going to be bathed in blood and that blood is going to be the blood of those who associate partners with God who takes lords in addition to him. That is going to be the blood of the Christians. Now Saul started off doing the right thing. He started off killing the Christians. But what happened? He converted and became the father of it. With that being said, my brothers and sisters, I would like to tell you this. Open up your eyes. Stop being blind. Stop being dumb. God tells you never to worship no one. And I'm going to get that for you. It says worship the Lord your God alone. And let's get the scripture where Jesus says it. Because <laughs> Jesus said worship God alone. We're no partners. He, he tells you this. Go to Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Then saith Jesus unto thee, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, 
Thou shalt worship the Lord your God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, if God wanted you to worship Jesus, he wouldn't be the God of the Bible. Because we just read, God never shares his glory. He never does that. Jesus is telling you to worship the Lord your God with no partners. He told you that. Okay, now if you go to Quran 5, 116, let's get there real quick because a lot of people do not understand what's been written. Yeah. I love, I love this verse. I literally love it. This verse right here hits home. It makes everything clear. Now we understand that even Jesus has a judgment day. And it is written, and on the day of judgment, Allah will say, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, did you ever ask the people to worship you and your mother as gods besides Allah? He will answer, glory be to you. How could I ever say what I had no right to say? If I had said such a thing, you would have certainly known it. You know what is hidden within me. But I do not know what is hidden within you. Indeed, you alone are the knower of all unseen. So here in the judgment day of Jesus, Jesus will disassociate himself with all of you who call him Lord. He will confess to you that he never knew you. He never told you to worship him. The only way. The only way that you can validate worshiping Jesus is by looking at the Bible and assuming. You can look at a scripture and say, oh, I assume that Jesus wants us to worship him. Okay. I had a fool who literally told me that he had a scripture. He said he had a number of scriptures where Jesus tells us to worship him. So he takes me to John chapter 5. Where Jesus says, honor me like honoring the Father. Okay, per se. Now, the same Bible says, honor all men. Honor the King. Fear God. So, how are you supposed to look at a word which is called honor and say, oh, that means worship? No. Honor does not mean worship. Honor means reverence. Okay, it means to show some reverence. But it does not mean to worship. Worship is a whole nother word. And Jesus tells you to worship the Lord your God in him alone. Now I'm waiting for his references because I said no. Worship don't mean honor and honor don't mean worship. Show me another scripture where Jesus says worship him. Because if you can show me a scripture where Jesus tells you to worship him, then you have a conflict with the Quran because Jesus said in the Holy Quran that he never told anyone to worship him or his mama. So keep looking, you won't find it. Jesus never once told you to worship him. You are doing that through assumption. You're doing that on your own will. Okay, You are assuming he said that when he did not say that. With that being said, assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.